are going to create the block. We are going to draft the bomber jacket. Um, by now, I assume you understand what a point of measurement sheet is. I also assume you understand what basic pattern shapes even look like. Um, so I'm assuming that you know to draft the bomber jacket, you know how many pattern pieces we're going to draft, and you have a vague idea of what the shapes should be. And then after reading the body measurement list, you can also identify um, the measurements of those basic shapes as well. Okay, um, so pencil it down so you kind of have it as a reference. I think it'll help you a lot with this project. Um, we are breaking it down step by step though. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And the point of this is to really start introducing you and familiarizing you with some of the basic tools that you would use every day in the closed software. So we are in the 2D. I just closed, you know, all of my library and history to make more space. I changed my screen to just be the 2D. I don't need 3D right now. Um, there's no shadow of the avatar because I haven't opened an avatar. So I'm just gonna focus on drafting these pieces. So number one, it says make a rectangle and it tells us how big to make the rectangle. Okay, so this is a good time to introduce you to our shapes tools here. So mine, it looks like I have a circle here. Under, if I hold down my left mouse, I have some other shapes as well. Yours probably has a polygon. I don't know why mine had a circle. Um, so polygon, we could just draft like any shape. Um, but if you just wanted to quickly draw a rectangle or circle, those are options as well. But you'll probably use this polygon tool a lot, I bet you. Um, you might be asking, well, what's the difference if it has this, these two shapes underneath it? They look like the same tool. Well, this first one's going to draft your actual pattern piece. This one's going to draft internal lines. So say you're trying to like place something, like, like this is where you want your pocket placed. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons for internal lines. So you do actually end up using those a lot. And the last one are baselines. Um, to me, they don't really do anything. They're just kind of there. I haven't had a lot of experience using them. I've had a little bit, but, um, but you'll probably mostly be using the top two. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to rectangle. Now I could click and drag my rectangle um, and try to eyeball it. I'm surprised. I wonder if I'm on a weird setting. I feel like it normally tells you what the measurements are when you click and drag. I don't know. I might be on a weird setting right now. It's kind of weird, but I'm going to delete that. I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to click one time and then this window pops up. So I'm going to follow the instructions. It says 9.25 inches by 18 inches tall. Okay. That looks good. So there it is. I'm going to move it. Do you guys remember this move tool? You can hit the letter A. It's on the left side of your keyboard. Q or no, Z would move just parts of it, like little anchor parts of it. And then A moves the whole thing. So A and Z are right next to each other. They're pretty handy. I'm going to pan so it's sort of centered and zoom in a little. Okay. So now it wants us to offset three internal lines from the top edge. Okay. So to offset, I need to select this top line and I'm in the letter A tool, this guy. So if I select it, it's gonna select the whole thing. So that's not what I want. So I need to hit the letter Z or just go over here and get my edit pattern tool. That way I can select just the top line. So that's kind of a big lesson on you know week two. Um, so here we go, I have it selected. So now how do I offset it? and you would just right click. In Clo, if you, anything you wanna do, when in doubt, I feel like start by right clicking. There's so many choices. Okie dokie, so let's, oops, I think I deselected, there we are. Uh, okay, so we want to offset as internal line. Yeah, that's what we wanna do. And it's saying, what is the distance? So the first one they want us 1.5 inches. And it's going down, so that's good. I'm gonna say, okay. Um, the second one, it wants it at four inches. So I'll go back to the top and right click. Offset internal line, I'm gonna say four inches. And you can see it has like some options. Like I could actually do four inches, maybe I do two because the next one's eight inches. Let's see if that'll work. 
So I believe this one is actually offset eight inches from the top, and this is only four. So that was kind of a trick, or you could always just right click, offset line, and just type in eight inches, one. Let's see if it falls in the same spot. Yep, exact same spot, so I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, cool. And so that takes care of steps one and two. So number three, we want to mark our half neck width at 3.5 inches along the top edge. Okay, um, so we're gonna do that. I think we're just gonna split the line. So I'm just gonna, let's see. You can either right click it, which maybe is a pretty easy way, and then you can split it. Okay, um, so we want 3.5 inches. So I'll say line 0.1, change that to 3.5. I'll say okay. And then our neck drop is going to be three inches along the front. Split, and I'll say three inches. Okay. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. There is this um, keyboard shortcut X. It's kind of handy because when we're transforming our shapes, you know, use A to select the whole thing. You use Z to select just part of it. X is right next to Z. So if you just want to like add a point or split a line, which is basically what I did, it adds a point and splits a line. You could also just hit X. Um, so I'm going to hit X right now. Let's see what it kind of looks like. Maybe, you know, I'm going to delete that last point. So I'm going to use this time X. So the first time I right clicked and I did split, I just, for some reason that felt comfortable to me and I did that a lot. But the other way is to just hit X and like visually point. And look, you can kind of see where it is too. Like I need three inches and you could see the numbers change. Um, I need three, right? I'm kind of forgetting. Da, da, da. Yeah, three inches, center front. Okay, so I'm just going to click, I guess right there. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna right click. <laughs> I'm gonna right click and I'll just type in three. Okay, so that's for um, the center front, front neck drop. Um, and we also wanna add our back neck drop at just one inch. So I'm just gonna right click and type in one. Okay, so I was using X, which is like add this, but it also kinda worked when I had my Z and I just like selected a line and right click, you could type in split as well. So I don't know which ways makes more sense to you. They both get you to the same place, which is good. Um, okay, that's step three. Um, okay, so number four, we wanna use the add point split line to mark across the shoulder at eight inches um, in on our shoulder slope drop and eternal line. So our first eternal line, we wanna add a point eight inches across. So I guess I'll hit X. I guess X is a good keyboard shortcut too because you're kind of like cutting it. Like an X makes me think of cutting. So it wants eight inches. I'm not gonna be able to get it exactly eight, so it's just easier for me to right click and just type in. I'm gonna do on line number two, eight inches. Eight, hello. Uh-oh. Eight. <laughs> okay. Um, 